Okay, following on from the last video, we're still finding the range, okay, and we've still got some endpoints. So if we start with endpoints for the first one, we've now got a lowest value of x is minus 1. So x equals minus 1. Okay, I shoved that into f of x, so I need to do f of minus 1. And I get 1 over 1 plus minus 1 squared. Minus 1 when you square it is plus 1, so this is um, 1 over 2. So I've got an endpoint of minus 1 a half. Okay, and my other end point is when x is 1, so x equals 1, f of 1 is 1 over 1 plus 1 squared, which is also a half. So my other end point is 1 a half. Okay, now the approach we took before is to sketch this graph. And if you've got a graphical calculator, then good luck to you. You can uh, get this graph up. But if you haven't got a graphical calculator, then we have to take another approach. Now, um, this has got several things going on. We've got a fraction. We're on the bottom of a fraction, I've got 1 plus x squared. So before I think about the fraction, I can think about 1 plus x squared. And in fact, taking a step back from that, uh, I know even more about x squared. Okay. Uh, and what can be helpful here, we're interested in the range of values things can take. So uh, interested in minimum and maximum values. So the minimum value and the maximum value of each of these things, well, the minimum value of x squared, okay, it does have one because we can't get negative answers out. So we know the minimum value for x squared is always naught, okay, which happens when x is naught. Now, what's the maximum value? Well, if I hadn't got a restricted domain, I could get any values greater than naught. But for x squared, I'm only allowed to have x between minus 1 and 1. OK, so my maximum value of x squared is going to be um, 1 squared is 1, minus squared is also 1. So my ma maximum value is achieved at both endpoints. OK, so what does that tell me about 1 plus x squared? Well, the minimum value is going to now be 0 for the x squared plus this 1. So I'm going to have 1 plus x squared is going to go from 1, and the maximum value when I add the 1 is going to be 2. But now let's think about 1 over 1 plus x squared. I've got to be a little bit careful here. OK, but um, if I do 1 over um, this 1, so I want the possible answer for 1 plus x squared is 1. OK, so 1, I'm going to do it down here, 1 will take me to 1 over 1, which is 1, because I'm doing 1 over the previous answer. Yeah, so if I do 1 over the previous answer, but I now start with the 2, so my 2 is going to go to 1 over 2, which is a half. So because I'm now doing 1 over, OK, the actual order has changed. I'm not going to put 1 here and a half here, because then maximum and minimum would be the wrong way around. Or, actually I can do, I can put 1 here and a half here. But because I'm now doing 1 over, the order has swapped around. So this is now my maximum value, and my minimum value is a half. OK, so as well as my endpoints on my graph, I'm not going to necessarily get a perfect sketch of this, but I know that on my endpoints I've got uh, w 1 a half, so this is the point 1 a half, and I also had the other endpoint was minus 1, with also with a y coordinate of a half, so that's going to be over here, minus 1 a half. Okay, but I also now know that I'm going to be interested in this point here. I got a maximum value of 1 for this, and that was the same way, the same value that gave me 0 for x squared. So x, this is all when x is 0, this column. So x equals 0 made x squared equal 0, which made 1 plus x squared equal 1. So 1 over 1 plus x squared was 1 when x was 0. So this isn't an end point, but it turns out to be an important point. It turns out the graph does something like this. I don't know exactly what shape it is, but I've reasoned that the lowest value it can have is a half, and the highest value it can have on the y-axis is 1. So the domain, all of these values between minus 1 and 1, okay, this is how I visualize the domain, all of this bit of the x-axis, okay, can be fed into the function. Okay, that's the given domain here. But the, the y-values I can get out, change colour, okay, um, the only y values I can get out, well, I can get this one out, that's a half. So this point or that point could give me a half. But the other bits of the graph, all of these points, will all go to y values here. And there's a highest y value I can get there, which is the top point of the graph. And that was the y coordinate here, which was this maximum value of 1. That's the point zero, 1 at the top of the graph. So my range, which is going to be my answer to the question, okay, are the y values I can get out which are from, my, from a half up to and including 1. 
Okay, so I want um, a half is less than or equal to something, it's less than or equal to 1, but I mustn't put y here because it's a function, I need to say f of x. I definitely mustn't put x there. So that is my range, that's the answer to this question. And I think that's the trickiest one of this set. Okay, let's have a quick quick look at the next one. Okay, so this again has got an endpoint, x greater than or equal to minus 2. Okay, but this is an unknown parabola. I need to actually do some work with this parabola to find out um, what it looks like. I'm going to use the stationary point method because that will apply more easily to things other than parabolas. So it's going to have a stationary point when dy by dx equals naught, where I'm using y to mean the same thing as f of x. So dy by dx will be 2x plus 4. That's got to equal naught, so that gives me an x value if I solve that of minus 2. Okay, so what will my y coordinate of my stationary point be? Well, put minus 2 into this, I'm going to get minus 2 squared plus 4 times minus 2 minus 3 is 4 minus 8 minus 3, which is minus 7. So I'm going to have a minimum value at minus 2, 7. Sorry, minus 7. Okay. So... Um, that notice, once again, the, the, the domain they've given has automatically coincided with this endpoint. I don't know why they've done that, okay? But it does save me a little bit of time. So when I draw the graph, okay, the full parabola would have its vertex at um, minus 2, minus 7. So around about here, minus 2, minus 7. I could draw the full parabola, but we know we just want x to be greater than or equal to minus 2. So I just want this part of the parabola, okay? Um... I'm not absolutely sure which side of the origin it goes, but I don't really need to worry too much about that. Oh, it's got a y-intercept of minus 3, so I'll have drawn it right. Okay, but that's irrelevant. All I'm interested in, I can see the domain. x being greater than or equal to minus 2 is shown that for all values of minus 2, or positive ones as well, for every bit of the, of the x-axis from minus 2 onwards, there's a, a section of the graph. But on the y-axis, the only y values I can get, I can get this minus 7 here, and then I can get, for the other points on the curve, I can get these other points on the y-axis. And the more I keep going, the more of the y-axis I get that way, but I can't get any y values of less than minus 7. So the range of this one is that f of x, don't call it y, call it f of x, has got to be greater than or equal to minus 7, and I am done.